I'm endeavoring to introduce a new phrase into the popular lexicon. And you'd like me to help? Yes, having watched as our classmates began wearing throwback headbands to mimic your style, I'm persuaded that you're what marketing professionals call an influencer. Maybe they just share my distant for perspiration running into the ocular cavity. Nonsense. Even the identical twins with anhydrosis, or inability to sweat, have gotten in on the trend. Well what is it that you want people to say? Panama. How do you mean? Surely you're familiar with the Central American nation. On this earth there is no isthmus I've overlooked, but that hardly answers my query. Well look here at the eyeglasses perched upon my face. What is it that supports them? The bridge of your nose? Yes, I thought you'd say that. But I'd rather you called it my eye Panama. Excuse me? Think of my eyes as the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans respectively, and my nose as the isthmus that separates them. When you put it that way I may not have studied every isthmus in the world. But shouldn't it be called your nose Panama? Quite the contrary. The nose Panama is the thin strip of epidermis that separates the nostrils. What is that body part called anyway? The nose Panama. And the Panama Canal? It would seem to ruin the metaphor. Nonsense. Does the Mississippi River stop us from claiming that America stretches from sea to shining sea? Spot on. I hadn't anticipated that retort. And it has earned a measure of my respect, so I'll level with you. Trends I am responsible for starting include bagged, pre-washed spinach, the otherwise incomprehensible popularity of Jimmy Kimmel, noise-canceling headphones, and some time later, the Vuvuzela. So you'll help popularize Panama as a common noun? So long as you swear that this isn't all motivated by some pathetic Scrabble-related vendetta. It is not. And you give me three examples of how I might use this in a sentence. Woodily. I'll assume the persona of a married, 56-year-old male as I utter example number one. Naturally. Look over there, Martha, there must be a punk rock show going on. Emerging from the flyer cover doors of that converted movie theater I've seen three kids whose eye panamas were pierced. They've got more semi-precious metals buried in their faces than does the natural resource poor Central American nation itself. Okay. I am comfortable with it hyperbole. Though the tone of my voice will not change during this next example, think of me as a 30-year-old woman being picked up by her boyfriend at an area airport. Proceed. Oh Dustin, my flight was terrible. Every last seat on the plane was filled, and the portly fellow seated to my left kept mounting elbow invasions of my seat Panama. By gum, that situation is vexing. And suddenly communicable with a phrase that isn't cliched in the least. Have you a third example, my denim-clad interlocutor? Fancy that I'm the superintendent of schools. In the run-up to prom, newly appointed Supreme Court Justice Elena Kagan writes a majority opinion that upsets certain precedents. Here is how I react. Yes. All right, teachers, the Supreme Court has ruled that we can no longer instruct students to leave room for the Holy Spirit during school dances, so going forward, just ask that they keep imaginary Panamas between themselves and instruct the parent chaperones to watch for unauthorized canal building efforts. That is a stretch, you sly linguistic tactician. Nevertheless, I've completed the trifecta. So spread this word far and wide, until it is being savagely mocked by those who read about it inside the style section of the New York Times. I'll begin by name-checking the all. Embed me, amused puppets, or some day beggars run site will be credited with spreading the Panama. Woodgily.